Hi, I'm Callan Bentley from Northern Virginia Community College, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about the geology of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Let's start by looking at a map of Virginia. This is a geologic map of Virginia produced by Chuck Bailey from the College of William & Mary. Uh, you can see that Virginia has several different geologic provinces. There's the coastal plain over in the east, the Appalachian Plateaus over in the west, and between them we've got the Piedmont, which is the biggest physiographic province in Virginia, and we got the Valley and Ridge, and in the middle of it all is the Blue Ridge province. And the Blue Ridge province is actually where our story should begin. Even though it's in the middle of the state, it's actually composed of the oldest rocks in the state. So it tells sort of chapter one of the overall geologic history of the state. Now, Virginia records uh, two complete cycles of supercontinent formation and supercontinent breakup. These cycles are often called Wilson cycles after the great Canadian geologist J. Tuzo Wilson from the University of Toronto. Wilson identified um, the Appalachian Mountains as being a great example of a place where uh, the rocks recorded the evidence of supercontinents coming together, uh, continental fragments merging with one another into a supercontinent, then breaking apart and opening up a new ocean basin. And so what I'd like to talk to you about today are the first sort of two stages in this diagram from uh, Steve Marshak's textbook, Earth, um, the Grenville orogeny and then post-Grenville rifting of the early supercontinent that's called Rodinia. So the basic idea here is this, that supercontinents uh, form from continental masses that merge together into a single mass, and then that lasts for a while, and then it breaks up and the fragments move apart in opposite directions. So we have evidence of uh, continental fragments merging with one another in the basement complex of the Blue Ridge. This is a, a terrain that's basically dominated by uh, plutonic igneous rocks and their metamorphosed equivalents, um, so meta-plutonic rocks as well. So we've got granites and we've got granite gneisses. And in general, in the Blue Ridge Basement Complex, the granite gneisses are older and the granites are younger. Um, so the granites don't have any kind of uh, an alignment of their grains, but the granite gneisses do have an alignment of the grains where they're lined up in, in uh, planes that's called metamorphic foliation. So basically, early packages of magma that were intruded into the crust got squeezed and they attained this alignment of their mineral grains called a foliation, whereas the packages of magma that were intruded into the crust late in the Grenville orogeny did not have as much a chance to get squeezed and so they don't have that foliation. Here's some looks at some of the different rocks of the basement complex. You can see they have different compositions. One of the compositions that's uh, rather distinctive is the charnakite. It's a pyroxene bearing granitoid. So most granitoids don't have pyroxene in them. They have amphibole instead, but this one does have this mineral pyroxene. Uh, so it's got sort of this greenish color in the fresh uh, rock surfaces. However, you can see this one isn't completely fresh. It's got this nice, well-developed weathering rind uh, around the exterior. Here's a look at the Old Rag Granite. This makes up Old Rag Mountain in Shenandoah National Park. It's the youngest of the uh, Grenville aged intrusive rocks in the basement complex. You can see it's distinctive blue quartz and it has a lack of a very well-defined foliation. It's about a billion years old. Supercontinent Rodinia formed around a billion years ago and then it broke up starting around 700 million years ago. Um, you can see on this map, which is modified from a map by Paul Hoffman, that we've got Grenville age mountain belts shown in orange on many different continents, not just the east coast of North America, but wrapping all around the world in this great uh, former supercontinent called Rodinia. So Rodinia formed, uh, these mountain belts uh, originated, and then time went by, the mountains were worn away, and Rodinia broke apart. One of the pieces of evidence we have for the breakup of Rodinia is uh, some sedimentary rocks, and another uh, piece of evidence is the uh, extrusion of massive amounts of basalt. Um, basically, both of these are, are recorded on the edge of Virginia, you know, here, um, uh, right there on the edge of the former North American continent. But what happened at this point is ancestral continents of Africa and Europe and South America all pulled away, opening up a new ocean basin, the Iapetus Ocean, which is named for the father of Atlas in Greek mythology. So the reasoning goes something like this. The Atlantic Ocean is named for Atlas, so we named the ocean that came in the same spot as the Atlantic Ocean, but before the Atlantic Ocean, 
for the father of Atlas, Iapetus. Here are some of those sedimentary rocks I mentioned. This is the Swift Run Formation. It is a compositionally immature sedimentary package. You can see that it consists both of mudstone and sandstone. There's a beautiful graded bed here where we see a, tr a crisp transition from fine grain to coarse grain and then a fining upwards um, of the sedimentary size. So a temporary increase in the energy of these sediments and a big package of sand uh, dumped all at once. Overlying the swift run are various flood basalts. This is a look at a modern day analog for the breakup of Rodinia. This is zooming into the Afar Triangle region of Ethiopia in uh, Africa. And basically you can see here that faulting has produced a basin. Sediments are draining off of the surrounding highlands into that basin. Uh, these sediments are not traveling very far from their source to where they will ultimately be deposited. So compositionally, they are still immature. They've got lots of feldspar in them and stuff like that. Notice also the presence of lakes depositing uh, fine-grained lake sediments. And then, of course, these massive outpourings of lava that become flood basalts. Okay, here's our look at flood basalts in Shenandoah National Park. These are the Catoctin Formation. Um, what we've got here is a look at the Catoctin Formation on Catoctin Mountain in Maryland. Um, lots of tholeitic uh, flood basalts that accompanied the opening of the Iapetus Ocean. In some places, they're deposited on top of the Swift Run. In other places, they're deposited directly on top of the basement complex itself. So in this picture, I sort of traced out there the contact between the 1100... Um, million year old basement complex and the approximately 570 million year old Catoctin formation. So there's about half a billion years of geologic history missing between those two rock units. The Catoctin formation developed a lot of primary igneous structures that are typical of cooling lava flows today like columnar jointing. Here's some examples of columnar jointing in Shenandoah National Park. Columnar jointing is also observed at places like Devil's Tower in Wyoming and the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, as featured on the cover of the Led Zeppelin album, Houses of the Holy. Um, here's an example of a uh, basalt column that has weathered out. This is on Little Devil Staircase Trail in Shenandoah National Park. You can see those nice angular um, sides to the column, how they intersect at, uh, on average, a 120 degree angle. There's some really exquisite columns exposed on top of Compton Peak in Shenandoah National Park, about a 40-foot tall exposure, um, classic columnar joining. Also, we see things like amygdules. Amygdules are filled in volcanic gas bubbles or vesicles, sort of a Swiss cheese style texture that develops when lava erupts and degasses. And if the bubbles don't get a chance to pop, they're preserved as void spaces in the rock. Later on, those void spaces can be filled in with mineral deposits. And we also see volcanic breccia. This is basically a fossilized lahar, a volcanic uh, uh, debris flow, which includes chunks of vesicular basalt in it. Stony Man Mountain uh, showcases some of the different layers of the Catoctin Formation. So the profile of the Stony Man uh, seen over here on the uh, right is uh, basically uh, the outcrop pattern of different um, layers in the Catoctin Formation. The volcanic breccia we just looked at weathers away more rapidly than other rocks, so it's recessed and forms the, uh, the bottom of the nose of that uh, facial profile. The lava got to the surface through a series of conduits called feeder dikes. Uh, feeder dikes are well expressed in Shenandoah National Park in numerous places. Um, the orientation of the feeder dikes is strongly um, aligned basically from northeast towards southwest, which indicates that when the Iapetus Ocean opened up, it was opening up uh, as ancestral Africa was pulling away in a southeasterly direction. These feeder dikes are well exposed on the trail up to the top of Old Rag Mountain, where the uh, basalt uh, in the dike is uh, preferentially weathered away, and it creates these sort of staircases that hikers can walk through. Columnar joining is also present here, not as well developed, but it forms the little steps in those staircases. So, thank you for your time, and I uh, hope you learned a little bit of information about the first two stages in the geologic history of Virginia. I'm Callan Bentley. Thanks for listening.